I'm Ken Record, and this is Mining Biblical Truth, a special edition for John 3, where I am uh, demoing a tool that I use all the time from an organization called BibleArc.com. It's uh, B-I-B-L-E-A-R-C.com, with a capital B at the start. This is a group that was an offshoot, or is an offshoot, of John Piper's Bethlehem Seminary in Minnesota. And uh, what I'm demoing, uh, previously, a couple weeks ago, I demoed their phrasing module. This is their bracketing module, which is actually the one that I use more often. And it's based on an analysis of language to help us understand how the ideas uh, in the language relate to each other. And that in turn informs uh, my homiletics for the passage. So um, I'm not gonna show you all the steps of this, uh, but I'll show you a few uh, examples and the final final product. So first of all here, um, what you see in the middle uh, is abandoned gray uh, are the uh, lines from the scripture. The red and yellow highlighting I have added, and that's not a necessary part of bracketing. I've done that uh, for your benefit. Uh, in a minute, I'll explain why. And as you can see, the numbers of the verses are off to the side here. Um, and normally with it, when this comes up, the verse two would all be combined. But use this tool here where you see that little orange slash show up. Um, that um, you use that to divide it into segments. And that's how uh, I have uh, divided these into these individual segments. Um, and they're, uh, before I get to that further into that, let me just say that we're gonna be talking about the left-hand side of the screen here. This is uh, the bracketing side. On the right-hand side is a system called arcing, which actually is doing the exact same thing it's just displaying it in a different way. Uh, it's not a way that I prefer, so I'm gonna talk about bracketing. But uh, bracketing, by the way, is a 10 week course offered by Bible Arc. It takes 10 weeks to really understand all of the different aspects of this. Obviously I can't <laughs> come close to explaining all that in a short video. Um, but what I've done here is I've shown why these parts of the scripture are broken off. Um, for instance, uh, let's take uh, the first part here. It says, now there was. Well, uh, was is the verb. And each idea that we're breaking off uh, should have a verb in it to make it a sentence. If it doesn't have a verb, that means it's a phrase. That means it's part of a sentence, so we wouldn't break it off in bracketing. When we looked at phrasing a couple of weeks ago, in phrasing, you would break it off. That's a different method. Uh, but as you can see here, each one of these segments has one red word. Came, said, no. Uh, some have two. Uh, do, come, be born. They're all verbs. What I've highlighted in bold type in yellow are the conjunctions and what one of the major things you learn from bracketing is the importance of identifying and understanding conjunctions these little words that connect ideas and so those are the key parts uh here and then once we've uh step one is is identifying those and dividing them out and then you work on the relationships to each other so for uh, instance, this is an easy one to uh, understand here. In 2E and 2F, we have the statement, for no one can do these things that you do unless God is with him. Well, that's what we call conditional statements. It is an if-then, except it's using the word unless instead of then. <clears throat> uh, and so it's like, if God is with him, then no one can do these signs that are with you. And so off to the side here, I have this designated as if, and this is then. This is the relationship between these two phrases. You see, it's another one down here. Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Here, the if comes first, and then the then. 
which is the usual way. We have another unless down here and another if then. And uh, another one I'll point out here is this one called the wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound. Well, uh, the wind is producing the sound. The wind is an action. The sound is a result. And so AC here stands for action and RES for result. So the way you create these is we'll use this as an example. This starts out with Jesus answered. There's the verb, but then we have, we always separate out uh, who's speaking from what they actually said. And so if we click on this dot, and then we click on this dot over here for everything that Jesus said, then we can, then we click here and it brings up this tape, this list of types of relationships and as you can see there's a number of, uh, of different ones here to choose from we're not going to have time to go through all these we already talked about the conditional one that's one down here it says conditional that's the if then it shows you what it's going to put in the box out here in bold uh, but when anytime you have jesus said something anyone said something that always falls into this idea explanation category the idea is jesus is speaking and the explanation is what he said. So we'll click on that. And then we click back out of that. And we get idea and explanation. Uh, another one I'll point out here is uh, we have this if then statement. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, that's creating this explanation, which is this whole section down here. But we normally create these one at a time starting at the smaller parts over here the, the closer parts and then we work from here out to here <clears throat> the uh, um, another important one is called a ground or reason that's represented by this g here so if you read this unless one is born of water and the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of god that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit well you might wonder, well, what's the relationship there? Well, if you insert the word because, it makes it makes sense in regard to the idea. No one can be uh, born of water and the spirit uh, unless one is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom. Why? Because that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. This is a, this is a reason for this statement, and so. Uh, five the relationship between five CD and six AB is a ground. Notice that the relationship crosses over between verses, which you'll see. You'll see verses broken up. You'll see them cross over. Uh, the uh, uh, they can have different uh, combinations. Uh, the grounds are very important. Another one that's important one is the inference. There's three dots here. Is a symbol they use for inference. And inferences are always indicated by the conjunction so or therefore. You see a so here. Uh, so that you know you're dealing that something is being inferred. And the question is, what's being inferred? Well, the wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So, therefore, it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. So uh, this statement is inferred based on what is said up here in 8A through 8E. Another one that's the, probably the most complicated relationship to understand is called the concessive. A concessive relationship is one where one statement uh, it seems like it contradicts the other, but it really doesn't. Or it's a, a, an opposite uh, kind of expression. Uh, supporting something by the opposite. So here we see the wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. The but here is the conjunction that clues you in that you're dealing with a concessive. Because what it's saying here is that although the wind blows where it wishes and you and you hear its sound, you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. 
And so we put the concessive on the opposite side from where the, the butt appears. <clears throat> and um, so once you get these basic relationships down, then you get out, when you get out to the, the bigger relationships, you have to ask yourself, okay, so what, what does this section here have to do with this section? Well, the uh, here, um, uh, Nicodemus uh, comes and he makes this statement to Jesus. And then it says Jesus answered him. But it's not really, uh, there is, a, there is a, a relationship called a question answer. But this is not really a question answer because Nicodemus doesn't ask a question. Uh, he just makes a statement. <laughs> Even though it, says, it could have easily said Jesus said to him rather than answered him. So if we click here and here for the relationship and we look at our choices, the one I chose for this was situation response. This is a special one that applies to, to situations and responses when the response doesn't seem to really match the situation. And that's what we have here. Uh, Nicodemus is talking about uh, his miracles, and Jesus starts talking about being born again. <laughs> they don't seem to be really related. So it's an the situation response relationship is used when it's un an unexpected response. Then um, down here, we have more of a basic question and answer. Down here, it's said to him, Nicodemus says, how can a man be born again when he's old? How could he, you know, leave his mother womb again and be born? And Jesus answered. Okay, so clearly Nicodemus is asking a question. Jesus is answering. So this is a question-answer relationship. And then uh, if you look at the, the, the big outer bracket here, we have to figure out what the relationship is between what, what comes here and what comes here. And there I chose progression. A progression is a, is a series of actions going from one to the next, not just a list. If it's something's just a list, we call that a series, but a, a progressive series is something where um, there's, pro there's progress. <laughs> so we call it a progression. Um, so once you uh, get all the way out to here, um, then... Um, the uh, uh, you get you you finish the the basic bracketing structure, and then doing your homiletics. What you can do is you say, okay, well, I could do uh, one through two F, and I could write a statement for that. What I've done over here to the right is in this other box. You can do your right on the screen. You can do your homiletics. So, for instance, down here where Jesus says, "Do not marvel that I said to you." Now, I could have combined five in this box here. I could have combined five C to H E. I could have combined five A to, to H E, or I could have combined four A to H E. But I chose to combine seven through eight. And I summarize it over here as for, for like you know, the wind is real by feeling it, you will know that the spirit is real by feeling its effects. That's my homiletic phrase for that section. So uh, that in a short nutshell is uh, uh, how bracketing works. Uh, I find bracketing really, really good for the New Testament and for doctrinal parts of the Old Testament. If something is just a narrative, um, then often phrasing uh, is more informative. Because the relationships in a narrative don't tend to be nearly as complicated as making logical arguments. So bracketing is really, really good for the letters uh, of the New Testament, more so than the Gospels. And I, I find this to be, an, a, 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 for me, an essential tool. It's something I just, I, I use it all the time. So I hope you have it for this. You can go to the website, BibleArc.com, and they do have some short demos, some short introductions to uh, the bracketing course to give you more information if you're 
uh, I encourage you to check that out. Thanks for watching and have a blessed week.